Hey YouTube, it's Lisa. Welcome back to my channel. Thanks for stopping by. I talk about fountain pens, fountain pen inks, journaling, and occasionally art and art supplies. Um, today's video was a request by a subscriber for me to show my entire fountain pen collection. So I'm doing it. Nestle in, get something to drink. This is going to take a minute to go through. As you can see, I've got several cases here to um, share with you. So without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, I'm going to start at the bottom and then I'll work my way up because it is quite a large collection. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'll just give you a brief update of what I currently have inked up in July because these are loose pens and they're just kind of sitting to the side and I don't wanna forget about them. I have been on a a little bit of a shopping spree when it comes to these Jin Hao 82 pens. So I've got three of these Jin Hao 82s, this vintage coffee, the vintage cream, and this is um, like a light blue, but it looks like it's white, um, or it's a white with blue shading or tones underneath it. So it's very, very faint. Um, these are in a fine, a medium, and a, um, a bent nib or a fude nib. I'm not going to um, uncap every pen and show every nib because otherwise we will be here for hours. I think that I almost always uh, preview or give you guys uh, reviews or first thoughts and impressions of these pens. So just look for other videos that I've already done. But I have these three. Those are a re recent acquisition. Those are fairly inexpensive ones. Um, I also have currently inked and almost out of, but I'm still writing with this Drama Ghoul Heinz exclusive. Uh, this is called Serene Amethyst Fountain Pen. I absolutely love this pen. Um, I've had it inked with Diamine uh, Pure Purple Dreams, Purple Dreams, um, and it's still going strong. So I'm still writing with that one. I did um, ink up my Coveco in the Tamio Teal. This is a absolute gorgeous color uh, pen. It's looking a little bit more navy, but it's actually very tealish in its color. And that is in a uh, medium nib. I also have in a medium nib, I've got my Coveco, I mean my Coveco, I'm sorry, my Twisby Eco um, in the medium nib. Um, this has in it Jacarbon uh, Vert Alanatide, and I'm still writing with that one. Um, I'm also writing with my Estabrook Esty in sea glass this is got a fine nib on it and i have to sneeze oh my god so sorry um i'll try to edit that out um this has in it studio um sailor studio i want to say 941 in it um ink color and lastly i'm still writing the very last drops on my leonardo memento uh this is the pungla plum i say i think is the colorway for this one this has got a extra fine nib in it, and I'm writing the very last drops of the Diatramenta Johann Sebastian Bach. So that one will probably come out right at the end of this month. Um, other pens that I had currently inked have been written dry, so they're back into the cases. And without further ado, we'll start with this one, which is on the bottom. This actually functions as a overflow case, and pens that I'm least likely to reach for, but I use them for various, um, sorry about that. I uh, had an allergy attack after <laughs> that sneeze. So this case, as I was saying, um, is just kind of odd used, used pens that I use for kind of very specific things from time to time. And they're some of my most inexpensive pens so when I'm done with these gin house writing them up this month um, I will probably stick them in this case because I don't have any room in a lot of my other ones but my inexpensive one includes this um, platinum dust pen which I absolutely love and it's great for um, drawing and it also has an oblique nib and I know I said I wasn't going to show nibs but that one is one of those ones that I really like for drawing I've also got the, um, this one is a Sailor, and this one is also a Fude Nib pen as well. Um, I've got 
the Platinum Preppy, which I like to take with me on travel sometimes. I've got two of these Pilot Kakunos. Again, great travel pens for me. I thought I was going to really enjoy this pen, and I might end up just giving it away, but this is the Jin Hao, I think. Let me see here. I've got so many of them. Jin Hao, this is the 159 that's supposed to... It kind of took the journaling community by storm. I think it was very popular as an inexpensive knockoff of the Mont Blanc 149. It does have a nice beefy grip section, though, and I do like that about the pen but I don't know if my nib is writing the smoothest. Now, I know that I can probably go out and get a new nib from Jin Hao from Amazon, and I might end up doing that just because I don't know if I got the best nib unit on the one that I got. Um, I've also got these two, and these are, again, I think these are Jin Hao's as well. I use these pens because they're really gushy writers. I use these for testing shimmer and sheening inks or if I want to write with a shimmer or sheening ink because they're they're medium nibs but they're almost a broad medium nib that I actually really just use those for those particular cases um, and then on this side I'll zoom in a little bit so you guys can see a little bit better I got the special edition Lamy, which I haven't written with a lot and again it was one of those pens that I might end up sticking um, Sorry about that. Might stick it, might end up sticking it into a drawing kit um, for me because I actually like the nib unit on that. Um, this was a Sailor. This one has a steel nib on it. I'm sorry, you're not in focus. This is a Sailor. It's the LeCool pen. I don't like this pen. Um, it's got a steel nib, and after having the ones that I have in 14 karat gold or 18 karat gold or 21 karat gold. I don't like this pen, so I will probably be putting this up for sale. Um, this one was an early collection that I got. Um, I got this one in Germany, actually, or I got it off of Amazon after I came back from Germany because I saw the brand in Germany. This is a Neosim fountain pen. It actually writes really, really quite well, and I haven't written with it in a while, and I need to actually pull it out and write with it. This is the Mahjong A1 fountain pen. Again, took the journaling community by storm. I was curious, so I went and I got one. And if I want to take one on travel and not take my pilot vanishing point, I usually use that one. And then lastly, I got this brand, and I don't even remember. Oh, this is a Sailor. Um, I don't even really write with this pen either very often, and I will probably just give it up for um, sell, but it is a bent food a nib. So I thought I would get that one again for drawing, which I haven't done. So they might end up going, but the three uh, Jin Hao 82s, when I'm done inking or writing with them, they'll go into this case. So that is that case. <laughs> now moving on to my smaller cases. Let me do my American oriented fountain pens because it's easier than <laughs> the international set. So this case I got from Endless Pens. It's a Shibui case. I keep my American fountain pens in here. So starting off, I've got the, this is a Monte Verde. It was a special edition. This is the Mountain Series. I think mine is called Everest. Um, I love this pen. It is absolutely a great pen to write with. Um, really, really enjoy writing with this. I think I got something in between here and my resin somehow, and I haven't been able to flush it clean, but this is absolutely one of my favorite and one of my only uh, Monte Verde pens. I don't have a ton of those. My Conklin, and this one is a little tricky to get out given the filling mechanism, gonna have to undo it because that's the best way for me to do it so this is my um, Conklin pen I absolutely love this Crescent Villa it's kind of old school um, it's very unique it's the only one that I have that's like this I don't have a lot of my Conklin's anymore I got rid of I'm trying to sell most of the ones that I do have but this is one that I'm going to definitely keep and it has a um, 
flex nib in it. So there's that one. Just got to put this back in here. Actually, it has a stub nib in it. I've got my Conklin stub nib on it. I can see that right now. Um, this is my one and only Franklin Kristoff pen. I got it at the DC Pen Show a few years back. I did do a review on this one. This is an absolute dream of a pen. I got it custom grind on the spot with the Nagahari, I think it's pronounced Nagahari uh, custom signet. So I absolutely love this pen. I need to put it in my rotation because I haven't written with it this year. And then I have one of three Estherbrooks. So I got this one. This is a Estherbrook Junior. Um, this was a special edition in Macchiato. I love this pen. It's really thin though. Um, I should say I love the design and style of the pen. I do wish it was a little bit thicker. The grip though down here is very comfortable in hand. So I actually put up with it quite well. I'm finding though that I'm not always in love with Estherbrook snibs unless they get specialized like this one, which this one was my very first Estherbrook. Um, <clears throat> at the time, it pushed my financial budget of like what I thought I was going to pay for a fountain pen. It was really quite expensive, but this is the Rocky Top Special Edition with Diamond Cast and it has a custom journaler's nib in it and I absolutely love this pen. It writes so incredibly well. Um, but the rest of my Estherbrooks, including my um, sea glass, the nibs are just meh. They're okay. I, I've got to like think about getting another one. I want to get it in a scribe and see if it writes better. This pen is from Little Pen Design. I bought this off of Etsy and this is, you know, hand turned acrylic. It's a nice writer. It's got a Yovo nib. Um, and so there's that one. And like I said, I did do a review of that one. So if you want to find that one on my channel, I will try to, um, if you, if you can't find it, let me know and I'll give you the link for it. This is an Osprey. Again, I bought this off of Etsy. Um, this came out of California. This one has a blind filling cap as well as a regular one, which is a little bit different. What I actually like, it's more like the Leonardo's that have the blind filling mechanism. Um, and again, the nibs on this are, I think just standard number six Yobo nibs, but this one is another really good writer. Okay, so that will conclude the American fountain pen collection that I have. I'm gonna move over to Taiwan now. And this case has nothing but Twisbees in it. And this case is from Galen Leather. I absolutely love their cases. And these are the Twisbees that I've, I have. Um, this is the Draco. It was a special edition um, that came out, I wanna say like 2020. Um, I don't think they sell this one anymore, but I absolutely love this pen. And I like all the Twisbees with the rose gold finish. This is the Twisby Diamond Smoke Rose Gold one. This one has a fine nib on it. Then I got the Eco in rose gold, and this one also has a fine nib in it as well. And I started to put, like as you can see, tape on it so I could tell which ones have it. This one has an extra fine in white and rose gold. I am selling my Twisby Iris, so it's out of the kit. Then I got my Mini. Um, I absolutely love writing with this pen, and it's a great travel pen too. The Twisby Precision has got some really good weight to it. It's all metal, and it's um, got a nice little ink window there as well. Really good writer, and I think this one is in an extra fine. The Twisby AL, uh, Diamond AL. This is the only one that I, I wanted to get. Um, I'm not in love with the grip sections on the AL, so I might be getting rid of this one as well. I'm just not a big fan of the grip section. Um, the texture of it, uh, while it doesn't, I can still write with it, it kind of bugs me. <laughs> so I think I might be getting rid of that one because I don't really reach for that pen very often as well. So that is round or part one of Taiwan pins. I've got more coming up. 
that I'm not going to dive in yet because I want to get through, well, I might as well. It's going to be a hop now um, on the collection. This big gray case that is so big that I can't get it all in screen, so I'll kind of zoom out a little bit, is the Galen Leather 40 pin case. And I will start from back to front so that we can go through uh, the pins that are from Taiwan. So <clears throat> my Taiwanese pins, in no particular order, is this pin Lux, which I absolutely love. This is the Grandmaster in Blue Swirl. Love, love this pin. I picked this up at the DC pin, another DC pin show in another year. Um, I pulled it right off of the seller. I was like, I really like that pin. I think he kind of custom grounded it a little bit. So it kind of writes a little bit like a fine cursive italic. Um, my other Taiwanese pins are my Opus pins. So these three Opus pens are all um, vacuum fillers. I think somebody corrected me on my last video from last week. Yes, they are not, I said vacuum. They're not vacuum, eyedroppers, I'm sorry. Um, they're eyedropper filled. So I've got this little tiny one from Endless, which it was the coffee series. I absolutely love that one. The other one I am selling actually on my Instagram channel. The Opus 88 Clear Demo is another eyedropper. This one has a huge ink capacity. So great if you have, or if you're a prolific writer and you need a pen through, if you're a college student, this would be a great pen because it will last you through many lectures <laughs> um, before you have to refill it up. And then this one is my Bella. And this was my very first Opus 88. And I really do love this pen. I love the colors in this pen. I just think it's really quite stunning. It does come in a blue and another color, which I can't remember, but I got this one. This one's considered the red. I think it's green, um, blue, green, and there's another color. Sorry, can't remember what it is. So that is part one of Taiwan pins or twi Taiwanese pins. And then the other one is, yeah, and I did the Twisbees. So let's go into, uh, I'll just kind of go and work my way up now. So now we've got the new pins. I've only got two of these pens. This was the Minima. This was my very first one. I got this off of a European website and I love the Minimas because they do post. Um, they come with these little notches in it so the cap does post on them. These take Schmidt nibs. Uh, Benu has Schmidt nibs and this is the Luminous Amber. And they're great little um, hand pens. As you can see, they can fit in your hand. Good writers. And if you can find a colorway that you like, you're you're getting a good pen there. Um, then I've got Peniter, and I only own one. This is the Full Metal Jacket I bought this years ago. Um, this is a really nice writing pen too. I actually really quite enjoy it. Recently on my channel, I just got done buying. Oh, Taiwan. Sorry, didn't put. I didn't have it in order. This is another Taiwanese pen company. Um, this is the Fine Writing International. I just got this one. This is the Skepter Series Zeus uh, colorway from, I got this from Endless Pen just recently. So that's one of those. Then my Italian pen number two or three, it actually is gonna be another, um, this was a special um, purchase with um, Emmy from Pen Ventures and Leonardo. I absolutely love this pen. It is a fantastic writer. Um, cost a pretty penny, but it was well worth it. Um, quite enjoy it. So that is my second Leonardo pen. This is my other one. And then the Peniter is the other Italian pen. So those are the three Italian pens that I have. And then I only have one pen from Turkey and that's this Kilk. And that's the um, one with the spinning top. I love the fidget factor of this. This is the Camera Laterna pen from Kilk. I got this one off of uh, Galen Leather. That's where I bought it from. Um, so there's that one. And that one is a very nice writer as well. Now let's go into Germany. Uh, I've got lots of those. Um, first off, I want to talk about this Mont Blanc. I didn't forget it. This I bought off of Etsy from a reseller in Italy. They were reselling this little darling of a pen. 
Um, I did do a review on this, and now the name is es escaping me because it's an unusual pen. It, um, it's a retractable, and I think I liked it for the form factor of the pen. And it's just absolutely, um, it actually, for a fine nib, it actually writes like a medium. It, it's a gusher. And it comes out with the cap, and it's a cartridge only pen. And I have to turn this out to get the cartridge out. So I just thought that, that was kind of a unique um, Mont Blanc pen. And so I bought, went ahead and bought it. And I cannot remember what the name of the pen is, but as soon as I find it, I will put it up above. It's just escaping me at this point. Um, okay. Next German pen, Faber Castell. Uh, this is one that I got in my earlier years of collecting fountain pens. This is the Faber Castell Loom. This is a great writer um, as well. This one's in a fine nib. I really like this pen. It's still nib, but it's really, really a nice pen. It's got a good weight to it too. Tend to use only cartridges with that pen for travel. It just makes it a lot easier. Then we're going to get into the Lammies. So I've got this Lammy Studio. I don't reach for this pen very often, so I might end up um, selling it. But this is the Lammy Studio in Glacier Blue. This was my one of my first fountain pens, so I will never get rid of this fountain pen. This is a Lammy. I want to say this is an all-star. Um, I just really, really like this pen, and I will not get rid of it because it's literally when I finally got out of my Pilot Metropolitan, this was the second fountain pen that I bought way back in 2015, 2016. Uh, tried and true Bauhaus design. We've got the Lamy Studio 2000. I had this inked with a Sailor ink, manual ink that did not cooperate very well with this pen. So I just got done um, emptying this one out and putting it back into the case. But this pen does write really, really well. Um, just not with that ink. Um, I'm going to digress because I forgot that I put this pen in here, which is another Taiwanese pen. This is the LeBond Cambridge 325. Um, absolutely love that pen, but it's in the wrong section because I don't have any more slots for Taiwan. So it's sitting over here in the German section, which it shouldn't. So let me just uh, move this Faber-Castell over here and put this here, because then I'll know it's an odd man out. Um, so that one is the Laban, and then I have the Caveco. Um, and I've got a whole case of other Cavecos, but this is the Dia. Uh, I bought this a few years ago. Really good writer, really enjoy it. Um, it's a nice pen. A little bit on the thin side, um, but it's a still, it's a really solid writer. Then I've got my three Pelicans right now, and I just got done um, putting to rest the White Tortoise, the M400. Um, this has a extra fine nib. I had this inked up with Diamine Sepia just recently, but I just ran it dry. Then I have the first Pelican, which is the M200. This was, um, I got this off of Goulet, and I forgot what the colorway on this is, but um, if you guys know, put it above, but I'll probably look it up and put it up again in the comments up above or in a card as it flashes through when I do the edit. Um, this is a really nice writing pen, too. It's one of the smaller pens, and the difference between the 205 and the 400 is not great. Um, they're very similar as far as the sizing is concerned, until you bump up until this one, which is the M600 Sovereign uh, fountain pen. I got this in an extra fine. This is a fantastic writer. All right, so that concludes Germany. And I'm gonna go back to Germany and the Cavecos because I talked about them. And this is my collection of Caveco Sports. Yes, I own this many Caveco Sports. I absolutely adore these little pens. I held off on these for probably I want to say the first year I bought one, this was my very first one in 2016 when I went to Germany. I bought this one at Le Bon store um, in Berlin. 
and I absolutely loved the pen but then this was like the only pen that I had that was a Caveco at the time and then I lost my mind probably around 2019 2020 and <laughs> went on a, a buying spree of sorts over the last few years of Cavecos and I absolutely adore these pens and they're mostly Caveco sports and they're gold I think they're classics if they're silver they're other brands but I've got some elites in the collection I've got this one and the light blue and because these are all Caveco sports there's really you know there's different nibs I finally branched out with Cavecos using a broad that I absolutely adore I thought I was gonna hate it I can't write with it all the time it's better for printing versus cursive but I do like having a broader nib now so I've actually opened up my mind I recently got the bronze from Caveco. I thought I wouldn't like the brass because it was too heavy, but then I went and got the heaviest one in bronze. Absolutely love it. Um, and I just got done writing with this back in the month of June and it, I wrote it dry. Um, the rose gold, the AL aluminums, I love the aluminum ones that I have. I don't have a mini, I don't have many of them. And the one that I really regret not getting was the espresso. Um, the Brown Espresso AL. I wish I would have been able to like get my hands on that because I really do love that that colorway of that pen. Um, so I've got the blues here. I'll just hold that up. There's 14 of them in this case. So that tells you how many I have plus the one that I already have currently inked. So I have a total of 15 Cavecos. Um, the burgundy, the red, the olive, this was a special edition that I actually found on Amazon. It's another uh, brown pen, the iridescent, uh, the coconut, this is coconut, this is the iridescent, and then the black crystal sport. So absolutely really enjoy my Cavecos quite a bit. And I know that they're all the same pen and I don't normally advocate, but the colorways on the Caveco let me change my pens by the season, which I actually enjoy. All right back to the case of 40 and let's move on to Japan and my Japanese fountain pen collection zoom in so sailor let me just go this way it might be better so I've got two sailor pro gears this is the Fika World Cup I think no this is not this might be the Fika World Cup I'm pausing because the Women's World Cup is going on right now and I <laughs> I'm a little tired from being up from the US match from yesterday. Um, this one is the, um, the colorway on this one is stellar, like space one. It reminds me of Star Trek. Um, I got this one and this one's got a custom grind um, architect nib in it. This one's just got the medium nib. So when I get sailors, my, my nib choice for sailor given how they write, is a medium unless I'm going to get a custom grind. I've got three of the Pro Gear Slims and I've talked and reviewed all of these pins on my channel. Um, the Dianthus, this is the Roseca, Yoseca Repost pin um, and I ordered the new one that's getting ready to come out as well so that'll add to the collection and this was my very first Sailor Pro Gear and I actually got this on Amazon and Amazon has this pen version commonly on sale so if anybody's looking to break into the sailor um, pen collecting getting a 14 karat gold nib on those Amazon for that one is a really good choice for it um, medium nibs tend to be a little bit better people find the medium fines or the fines especially kind of scratchy and I don't know if this one comes even in a medium fine this was another one of my very first Sailor ones. This is the, uh, this is an old one. Look at the nib. So in one of my Sailors, I've got a zoom nib. Yeah, this is the zoom nib. This has got a zoom nib on it. And one of the things that make Sailor and uh, Platinum uh, really special is how many different kinds of nibs you can get, as well as Pilot. Um, so that was my only one and only kind of specialty uh, nib standard I would say um, for Sailor that I have. Now we go into Pilot. I've got two Pilot Pieras. Um, this was the very first one. This is a great introductory pen. I think if somebody's starting off with fountain pens 
and what's a solid writer this is a really good one to have it's a little bit on the smaller side I did buy this one um, from Amazon when I first got it and then I decided to try the curse of nib because I wanted to see if I wanted to get a custom pilot grind which I'm thinking about doing um, okay sorry about that I had to take a phone call um, so I concluded with I have the two Pilot Prieras, um, really good solid buys I think if somebody's looking to get into fountain pens um, as a option versus the Pilot Metropolitan um, for me I would tell you to get those or the Kakunos they're actually good starter kind of pens to see if you like the hobby or not moving onward more Pilots I've got the Vanishing Point that I've had for a while in Carbonese Blue love this pen I just got done putting this one away as well I just got done having that one inked up not too long ago and then I bought the Fimo because I really do like retractable pens and this one you see how this retraction is gonna work comes out let me do this again so you can see this and this one is in a fine nib as well love this pen and I like how you've got to really force it so that it doesn't uh, go back on itself you got to really turn that um, there's that one my Pilot Custom 823 in Amber, Solid Rider. This was a holy grail pen for me. I absolutely love this pen. Again, I had this one inked not too long ago and, and put it back. Um, I've got the Custom 912 Heritage. This one's got a FA nib on it. I do keep the stickers on these because it does help me kind of distinguish what's on them. This is a great writer too. A little tricky, so I was talking about like exploring um, different nibs and writing experiences with Pilot. They're another company that has lots of nib options. I wanted to try some of them to see how particular they were. This one is one that I need to spend more time with because it is a different kind of writing experience than your kind of standard issue, you know, round tip nib or um, a medium versus the broad, like the kind of standard medium fine, extra fine broad nibs. These are when you start to get into these different kinds of nibs, the Waverly, the Falcon, it's a different kind of writing experience. And so wanted to try the nib, try the pen. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna keep this one or not, but I have this one for now. Then I got the Custom Heritage. This is in a fine medium. I love this pen. Um, it's a piston filler, so it makes it very easy to fill up. Um, pilots, converters, as a whole drive me absolutely around the twist um, if they don't have the vacuum filling mechanism like the custom 823 the con 40 converter I'm like what the heck is going on pilot get it together because <laughs> that's the one thing about pilot I will say that con 70 is a pain in the butt and so is the 40 um, the custom 74 is in a fine I like this one. It has the Con 70 converter, hence I was just talking about it. That looks like it needs to be air dried out. Um, I'm going to just pull this converter out so it can have a chance to dry because it's still sitting a little damp in my, my pen here. Um, this pen is a great pen as well. Love the nib. It's got a little bit more bounce to it than even the Custom 823, but it is a fantastic writing instrument. Okay, now the last three pens. I have our um, Platinums. So my Kyrados, I absolutely love. I love how engineered and mechanical this pen is. I like how it writes. I like the fact that it retracts. The only thing I would say that I don't like is how big the knock is upon retracting out. I don't know why they felt like they needed to make it so big, but that's a minor technicality. Overall, I really do love this pen. And currently, they do have different colorways that have come out with that. So if you wanted a red, a blue, or a black, you can now get that in the Kyrados. Um, this one is the, uh, I, this one's gonna have a music nib on it, I do believe. And like I said, there you go. That, that nib is just, let me get this in focus. That nib is just fantastic. And this one is a nice, juicy writer. And it's just, it's, uh, I actually really do enjoy writing with this nib. I don't write with it a lot. Um, it was made for people who were writing music and were trying to do the musical scale. And it's just a really nice, a nice pen. And last but not least is my Platinum 3776 
Shape of Heart. Um, I initially passed on this pen and then I saw Brit from Carrots and Olive have had gotten this pen and I was like, I really actually do like this pen and it's in rose gold finish. So I was kind of like, I forgot about that when I was seeing the uh, reviews on it, but it's just, this, this nib is just fantastic. Um, and it writes really, really quite well. It's one of my favorite platinum pens by far. Um, I've got another platinum 3776 that I currently have on for sale that's in an extra fine. Platinum does have that feedback technology, so it does feel like it'll it'll feel like it's a little bit scratchy, but it's just hard feedback. But I think the extra fine does feel a tiny bit scratchy, but I actually, if I don't sell it, I might actually just keep the pen because of that 14 karat gold nib and they're not making the nibs quite like they used to. So finally and lastly, I have concluded my current What Do I Have inked. The only pens that I didn't show are the ones that are up for sale and I think I have already kind of gone through a video on those in detail. So these are the fountain pens that I currently have and this was my collection. If you have any questions, please leave a comment below. Thank you so much for stopping by. If you made it to the end, I really do appreciate it. Um, hit the smash button. If you guys have any more suggestions for videos, let me know in the comments. All right, until next time, take care, stay safe. Bye.